uh, I remember when my mother was arrested in 1982, I was 10 years old. And for the sudden, like another new identity has been opened to me, which is the revolutionary identity, rising against the occupation from a very personal point as a child who wanted uh, not exactly revenge, who wanted justice, let me put it this way. I wanted to do my silly things as, as a child, but I couldn't. Even, you know, even reaching school sometimes was impossible. And if we manage that, then you go back home, sometimes with no school bag, tears in, 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 in your eyes because of tear gas, demonstration, army everywhere, settlers attacks. And wherever there is a checkpoint, you never know what's gonna happen with you and what's gonna happen to you, especially when my mother was with me because she was a target and that was clear. In 1990, I was arrested for the first time by the Israeli army with my mother. So finally, I served four years in the Israeli prison with my mother who served five years. And for me, going to prison was, uh, you know, was uh, the, the, the break of my dreams, the break of my hopes. I didn't want to spend the best years of my life in prison. And what all what I did and all what I practice is my, my cause of freedom, all what I wanted. Then we decided to go for a hunger strike. Yes, both you myself. and your mother, right? Yes. 17 days of starving. And after 17 days of that really hard struggle, we managed to meet. And I remember coming back to prison, so proud of myself, of my mother. But something inside me has changed. Suddenly this young man who thought that Israel understand just violence, there is a new option in life to achieve freedom. And the best weapon that I have never used before, and even I discovered through that hunger strike that I was blind to, is my humanity. So I start learning about Mahatma Gandhi, about Martin Luther King, about Mandela, who's my biggest inspiration. And listen, the issue of revenge, even after I lost my brother, he was killed by the Israeli army in 2000. I was wounded also by settlers. I paid high prices to go for physical legitimate action because people will tell you it's the freedom fight. It's moral, it's legitimate. Someone occupy your land, so you fight back. But things are not easy this way. Things are much complicated than that. On the other hand, what I want to say that the best revenge of the occupation is to celebrate our existence as victims, not to become victims of the system. By adopting nonviolence, my life has a meaning because I can easily revenge or kill someone or get killed. And that's it. This will be the end of the story. But I don't want my dream to end. I don't want my identity to be buried. And I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist. And finally, I don't want to kill people. I don't want to be a victim of anyone, and I don't want to be a victimizer. This is the high level of nonviolence. And nonviolence is the best bridge to your freedom, to your rights. Because just there, during the process, you start practicing the dream and building a state. So it will not take us so much to heal after that, because we're already in the process. That's my hope. I always say that violence is like love. You, can, you cannot have a tactic love. You know, Gandhi spoke about uh, Sayata Graha and Himsa together. It goes together. So love is not a project. Yeah. <laughs> it's like something in your blood. Yeah. And this is who we are. We are non-violence people. So this charter came to describe the values, but also it's a big call to everyone. Here and uh, internationally. So I always tell Palestinian, you know what? I'm not asking you to stop being angry because you cannot stop being angry. But I'm asking you to invest this anger in the right way. 
So don't create another grave for yourself to be buried because of your rightness. Do you want to be right or do you want to succeed? That's a big question. So that's why victims has, has to think about success. So nonviolence is the only collective place that can bring them together to feel strong as one national body. That's my, that's my opinion. And finally, you know, to release ourselves from victimhood, sometimes people need justice. But I'm not stuck there because uh, I don't believe in justice. I believe in fair solution. And I'll tell you why. There is no just solution. There is justice, but there is no just solution. Because if you ask me, what will be the just solution for me who have become a, a refugee, who have lost my brother? What is justice for me is to have him back. What is justice for Robbie is to have David back, his, her son. That's justice. But then does that mean there is no justice and life is just hell? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying what Malcolm X said. He said, justice is just us. So I'm not expecting anyone to give me justice. I have to be just to myself by not being the victim that the victimizers wanted me to be. That's what I meant.